service this morning begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of our Epiphany season. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of our scriptures. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with in interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. 
and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read together Psalm 19, found in your service booklet. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells his tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. All of the heaven are the words of their language, and their voices are not heard. Their sound has gone out into all ends, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep, as he sat in the pavilion of the sun, he comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion who runs his horse. He goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired of a day than gold, more as much time than gold, sweeter far than honey. of leadership, 
various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee. And a report about him spread throughout all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. The mission statement. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today's gospel reading in Luke illustrates for us Jesus' first recorded sermon after his baptism and his return from his desert temptations and meditations. This inaugural address was preached in the synagogue at his hometown in Nazareth. This first sermon sets the tone and the agenda of Christ's entire mission and ministry. As Jesus begins to read the passage from the ancient scripture of Isaiah 61, the Pharisees, the scribes, and the long-term members of the church, they begin to nod with a pleased nod of acceptance as Jesus began to read. There would maybe be a wink or two from some of the locals saying, that's our boy. You know he's a local boy. But quickly they began to realize that there was something very different about this sermon. They noticed immediately that Jesus left out a part of the scripture. Jesus read Isaiah 61, 1 through 2, but he left out the second part of verse 2. Jesus read from the first verse, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free. And the second verse continues, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. But no, Jesus did not include the second part of verse 2, and the vengeance of our God. What Jesus quotes from the Old Testament is important, but so is also important what Jesus does not quote or leaves out. Now the Jewish listeners would have loved to have heard about a little vengeance given the current political oppression by the Romans. And people today in our churches love to hear or entertain a little self-righteous vengeance from time to time. The people in the synagogues would have also noticed that after this personalized reading of the scripture, Jesus rolled up the scroll. He gave it back to the attendant and he sat down. As if to say, that's it. That's it. That's all there is. Here it is. That's all I have to say about that. And then the people really would have been taken in the back by Jesus' concluding statement. Today, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. What the people would have heard in the translation of the tense is the action had already begun. Not in the future, but the here and now. The people expected to hear something about the restoration of the people of Judah and Israel in the future. But Jesus is saying that the fulfillment of the scriptures and the restoration of humanity is in the present. In the here and now. Through Jesus. The Christ. In Jesus Christ, the spiritual home for God's people is no longer a geographical lo location, no longer just in the temple or synagogue, church, no longer just in another time, but in the presence of Jesus dwelling in the hearts of all people. Jesus' first sermon sets the agenda for Jesus' mission and ministry. In effect, Jesus' first sermon, found in our gospel reading today, is Jesus' mission statement, if you will, for his entire ministry. Now, i got to tell you, sometimes I'm confused about all the various mission statements that are written by many churches, including our own. Well-paid facilitators are often called in to help a vestry or church leaders to design a very personalized mission statement. I've been a part of that process a number of times. Do we not realize that Christ set a mission statement for his own ministry and for us? I've read mission statements that reflect certain theological or traditional principles. And some others are really pretty market savvy, you know, pretty, pretty catchy. Jesus outlines his mission statement to the world and to us in his first sermon. Share the gospel, the good news with the poor. Proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. Set free those who are oppressed. Proclaim a favorable year of the Lord with justice and forgiveness. These mission statements are about human need. The gospel is always related to human need. Throughout the gospels and especially the parables. Christ's ministry is always related to human need. The mission statements can be interpreted both figuratively and literally. 
For instance, many of us are in need of Jesus' ministry. Some of us are poor in spirit and in need of God's encouragement and hope found in the good news. Some of us are spiritually poor, in need of God's love, his forgiveness, and his grace that is found in the good news. Some of us are held captive by our own sin, our desires, our shortcomings, our obsessions. Some of us are spiritually blind, that we have cataracts that block or distort our vision of a loving God. Some of us are oppressed. We are oppressed by economic pressures, job or career pressures, by hard hearts of others, or powerlessness. Many of us are held captive to the concerns and the goals and the expectations of this world. Some of us are in need of justice or forgiveness from others. Jesus' mission statement and ministry is about our needs in our life. That is true. But it is most assuredly about literally meeting the needs of others. In our Sunday school book, Tom Berlin makes a very pointed statement that church is not just a religious spa. You know, if we get restoration and rest and rejuvenation, thanks be to God, we can find that. But it's not just about that. It's about being restored. It's about being energized. It's about being healed and taking that to the world outside of us. This is most assuredly about meeting the needs of others. This is the mission statement for the church. And for every Christian, we must not analyze this gospel message as God meeting just our own needs alone or just supporting the status quo, but also as a direct mission of meeting the needs of the people of the world. We are called to minister to the needs of the poor, those in poverty distress or in need of social and economic justice, those who are marginalized or without power or status, those who are vulnerable or downtrodden, those in need of health care or educational opportunities, those in need of restored dignity, and those who have been forgotten, neglected, or discounted. Now, if you are turning your face to the side about right now or losing interest or tuning out, you're turning away from Jesus Christ himself. You're running him out most assuredly as the Pharisees did. If we want to understand Jesus and what it means to follow him, we need to understand his first sermon in Nazareth, his mission statement. To the world and to us. Jesus' passion for the poor, the captives, the oppressed, and those in need of freedom and justice is expressed throughout the Gospels time and time again. There are 37 sermons about the poor in Luke alone. Not some of our theological concerns. But about the poor, if we are to be his followers, we are to follow his passions, Jesus' passions, and to continue his mission and ministry in the here and now, heaven on earth.
Folks, are we driven by the mission statements of our society, of our culture, of our political parties, and values of self-preservation? Or are we driven by the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ? I pray that for us it will be the latter. Let us now stand and say together the Nicene Creed, the outline of our Christian faith, found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer and also in your service bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all beings were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a man. For our sake, he was crucified under the Father. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and the mortgage was treacherous. He ascended into heaven, and then is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. People 4 and 3 are found in your service booklet or on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. Remembering especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis of the Roman Church, Michael, our presiding bishop, the bishops and ministers of the Episcopal Church and the Anglican community, Phoebe, our bishop, and Father Terry, our priest, we pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of the reward of the sacraments. Remembering especially Joe, our president, Bill, our governor, and all mayors of Shelby County and the surrounding areas. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. 
Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may not favor in your sight. Remembering especially Kathy, <coughs> Jessica, the Curlin family, Sue, Bonnie, and Jason. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Mary's Dyersburg. We pray for the West Tennessee Haiti Partnership Mission. We pray for the Village Mission in Liberia, Africa. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for peace among all nations. We pray for peace for our own nation. We pray for the protection and comfort of all those who serve this country in foreign and domestic lands, especially Trevor Hawley and Jacob Stevens. We pray for Christians that are being persecuted throughout the world. The altar flowers are given to the glory of God by Melba Zanella in honor of her mother-in-law, Rita Batezzo. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating a birthday, especially Leanne Bennett, Matthew Nelson, Jeff Albert, Allison Nelson, and Margaret Smith. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating an anniversary this week. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the healing, uh, for the continued healing and restoration of uh, caused by the COVID viruses. Give thanks for all the blessings in this life. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Our confession can be found on page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer and also in your service bulletin. Together, most merciful God, we confess and we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you into eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everyone. Peace. Peace.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we rejoice in that sunshine, don't we? <laughs> oh, good. Amen. Just brightens up the spirits. A few announcements this morning. Reminder about our Wednesday healing service at 1210. Please come and join us then. Our adult education continues. Wow. Very powerful study on uh, courage as a um, part of discipleship. And uh, it has been a very stimulating and challenging uh, study thus far. Come and join us at any time. Uh, for the DVT, the DVD presentation, and then a discussion afterwards about how it relates to us personally. Continue uh, to, uh, to remember our prescription bottle ministry, uh, our food bank ministry, and although we've officially sort of ended the Mana House, at any time you have uh, uh, goods uh, for the Mana House, you can put those in the drop box. Kind of a last call on your pledge boxes. If you haven't picked up your pledge boxes, please pick those up uh, so that you can have them. Again, even if you don't use the pledge envelopes to do your pledges, uh, if you can pick up your box, so we'll know that, that, that they're uh, accounted for. Our reader packets are ready for all the readers, uh, limbs, and others. Uh, please pick up your reader packets so that you might have and prepare uh, for your Sunday assignment. A reminder also of uh, we're, we're going to be having a CPR certification and a brief training on AEDs. Uh, hopefully we'll have at least one AED here. Um, and that training session is on February the 20th after the 1030 service. Uh, the training will be held by the Bartlett EMS. So please sign up. There's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board. We already have uh, at least five, which we needed to have that for the class to go. We would love to have 10 uh, for a, a, a full active class. The vestry uh, certainly sees that as a appropriate ministry uh, to this parish. Mark your calendars, even though it's uh, some, uh, some distance away. The bishop's coming on March 13th. I say that because that means that uh, if you're interested in confirmation or, jo or joining the church, please contact me for a confirmation class or an inquirer's class uh, that we will develop after we have a feel of who might be in involved with that. So please uh, let me know if you're, if you're interested. If you've been sitting on the fence a little bit about joining the church officially, this is your time. This is your time to do it. Make it official with us. We, we, we may be adopting you anyway, but this is kind of like your official adoption papers. <laughs> we want to welcome once again Carolyn Mason, who's here uh, as our organist. And not just our organist today, but providing some very special music. Uh, she's a very talented woman and, and has agreed to use uh, the share of her talents and gifts. She has brought her dulcimer today. And so we're going to have special music during, uh, during our service today. And we, and we thank you for that extra effort. Uh, and a little bit of a plug, I guess. At Holy Communion uh, at 5 o'clock? 5.30. 5.30. Holy Communion at 5.30. Uh, they have a Celtic service. Okay, Celtic and Taze. But it's it's a it's a very it's been a while since I've been able to go, but I've really enjoyed uh, that uh, really meditative service. But uh, you'll see Carolyn playing her dulcimer there as well. Welcome. Any other announcements that we might have? How about birthday celebrations? Do we have any birthdays today? be celebrated? Anniversaries? Okay. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus, it is more blessed to give and to give of ourselves 
than to receive. Using Eucharistic Prayer C, found on page 369 during our Epiphany season. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe. You are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you, you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your labor and were created and had their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race, and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill, and made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. 
supper he took the cup of wine he gave thanks and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Ruth, and Esther, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen the Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. blood our Lord Jesus Christ keep you to everlasting life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you to everlasting life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you to everlasting life.
week. Amen. For those that could not be here today, and for all of those that we have prayed for, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep them to the everlasting life. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood, send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his countenance upon you and bring you peace. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you for the rest of this Sabbath day, for your upcoming week, during our joyful epiphany season, and forevermore. Amen. Amen.